how's it going everybody in this video we are going to solve uh, eighth question of chapter two part a from Confix optimization book before jumping to the solution let's spend some time and see what the problem is asking our goal is to show if s is a polyhedron if you do not know what a polyhedron is please refer to my video that goes over them thoroughly i'll put a link to that video in the description section below however i will go over the concept of uh, polyhedron very quickly a polyhedron is the, the common solution of a bunch of linear equalities like this and linear inequalities like this where the solution set of linear equalities is a hyperplane uh, and the solution set of linear inequality is a half a space if you do not know what a hyperplane or half space is please refer to my video on them i'll put a link to that video in the description section below to better understand the problem i will lay out the problem pictorial the supposed two independent vectors a1 and a2 both in r2 are given since both y1 and y2 range between negative 1 and 1 we can go along the dotted lines or vectors y1 a1 plus y2 a uh, a2 is a linear combination of two arbitrary points on the vectors or dotted lines suppose i pick this point as y1 a1 and this point as y2 a2 then the resultant is this point which is y1 a1 plus y2 a2 if we do this process for all points we will get a parallelogram in the next slide our goal is to represent this parallelogram in terms of either hyperplanes or half spaces or both if we do that we have shown that this parallelogram is a polyhedron because polyhedron is a bunch of hyperplanes or half spaces we start with a half a space h1 h1 is a half a space whose normal is n1 in here and is perpendicular to a1 h2 is a half a space whose normal is here in one tilde and is perpendicular to a1 as well the intersection of h1 and h2 is s1 to characterize h1 we need n1 vector which is here and it is perpendicular to uh, a1 and to characterize h2 we need n1 tilde which is perpendicular to a1 the good news is n1 equals negative n n1 tilde so let us find n1 we find n1 by knowing that a1 and n a2 are independent thus they are not in parallel hence there is an angle between them we project a2 on a1 and uh, subtract the projected part this part to get the part of a2 that is perpendicular to a1 which is n1 right here uh, in this projected part uh, this part is going to be the magnitude and this part is the direction so subtracting the horizontal part this part will provide us with the perpendicular part which is this part s1 is the intersection of h1 and h2 it is limited along a2 and it goes uh, to infinity along a1 so one can write s1 as all points y1 a1 plus y2 a2 where y1 ranges between negative infinity and infinity and y2 ranges between negative 1 and 1 now suppose x belongs to s1 so one can write it as a linear combination of a1 and a2 as y1 a1 plus y2 a2 now multiply both sides by n1 transpose we know n1 is perpendicular to uh, uh, a1 so the first term on the right hand side vanishes this term and we get this equality now if we take the absolute value of both sides we have absolute value of n1 transpose x and the absolute value of y times absolute value of n1 transpose times a2 and since the absolute value of y2 is less than 1 we can write this inequality this inequality can be written as two different inequalities these two inequalities right here we can write them separately uh, so we have two half spaces this half space and this half space also we can rewrite them in terms of n1 uh, tilde uh, but because it does not make any difference to use n1 tilde or n1 we pick n1 
remember, we managed to get the intersection of H1 and H2 along A1. We can pick half a spaces so that we end up with an intersection that is along A A2. Thus, consider H3 as one half space. Also, let H4 be another half space. Using the similar argument, we would end up with these inequalities that provide us with these two half spaces. The intersection of S1 and S2 is our parallelogram that is characterized by these four inequalities. And this is our parallelogram, which is indeed a polyhedron since it can be represented as the intersection of four half spaces. In higher dimensions, things are a little bit different. Now suppose A1 and A2 are in R3. I will use R3 for the sake of representation, but the process works for Rn, where n is larger than 2. Because y1 and y2 range between negative 1 and 1, we have this picture. The set again is a parallelogram, but in a 3D space. We need to represent it by hyperplanes and half spaces to show it is a polyhedron. In case of 2D parallelogram, we did not concern about the hyperplane on which the parallelogram was located on because it was our 2 plane. Now we do not know what is the hyperplane on which our parallelogram is located in R3. Thus, we need to characterize it. This hyperplane is the gray hyperplane you see right now. It can be characterized by its normal N0. N0 is perpendicular to all linear combination of A1 and A2. All the linear combinations of A1 and A2 is the subspace spanned by A1 and A2. If you do not know what a subspace is, please refer to my video about affine sets where I explain subspaces as well. I'll put a link to that video in the description section below. N0 is perpendicular to span of A1 and A2. It means it is in the null space of subspace spanned by A1 and A2. Since A1 and A2 are independent, the null space of span of A1 and A2 can be characterized by n minus 2 vectors. Uh, hence, uh, for all x in span of A1 and A2, we have these equalities. We can characterize the hyperplanes on which our parallelogram is located on. In other words, we are representing our hyperplane as the intersection of n minus 2 hyperplanes, and that hyperplane is S0, which is in a gray color. Let H1 be a half a space whose hyperplane is in parallel with A1, and it is passing A2, and it includes A1. So it covers this part of the uh, space. Since the hyperplane of H1 is in parallel with A1, its normal N1 is perpendicular to A1. Similarly, let H2 be a half a space whose hyperplane is in parallel with A1 and is passing negative A2 and it includes A1. So it covers this part of the space. Since the hyperplane of H2 is in parallel with A1, its normal N1 tilde is perpendicular to A1. The intersection of H1 and H2 is a slab that is going along A1. So along A1, we go to the infinity. Hence, Y1 ranges between negative infinity and positive infinity. Along A2, we are limited. So Y2 ranges between negative 1 and 1. As you can see, we have a thickness here. This means that we go to plus and minus infinity along the normal of the plane characterized by A1 and A2. Uh, these such Z points are perpendicular to both A1 and A2, so we have Z transpose A1, Z transpose A2. Uh, therefore, the intersection is all points Z plus Y1, A1 plus Y2, A2 with these constraints. Similar to the 2D case, in order to characterize H1, we need to characterize its hyperplane by its normal, which is N1. As we mentioned, N1 is perpendicular to A1, so we project A2 onto A1 and subtract the projected part to find N1. This projection happens on the hyperplane uh, built by A1 and A2, so N1 is on that hyperplane. 
n1 transpose times z equals zero because z is outside of the hyperplane and is in the null space of span of a1 and a2. Now let x be a point in the intersection which is written in this form. If we multiply by n1 transpose, we get the same result as we got for the 2D case. Now we can create a slab that is along A2 by considering half space H3, whose hyperplane is in parallel with A2 and passes A1 and includes A2. H3 covers this part of the space. Also, its normal N2 is perpendicular to A2. Similarly, we have H4 that covers this part of the space. The intersection of H3 and H4 is going to be S2 that is characterized by these inequalities similar to S1. If we intersect S1 and S2, we get a parallel pipette like the one on the next slide. This is the parallel pipette showing the intersection of S1 and S2. Remember, we had S0 as the hyperplane on which our parallelogram was located. So we find the intersection between parallel pipette and S0 to get our parallelogram in three dimensions. R3 was just for the sake of representation. For all dimensions, these inequalities and equalities characterize the set S. Therefore, S is a polyhedron. And this finishes the video. Thank you for watching my videos and I hope you've enjoyed this video. There are two things you can do to support me. You can support me by liking my videos and giving them a thumbs up. Also, you can share my videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. Finally, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notifications for new videos and have a great day.